All right, hello and welcome everyone. Exciting day today. I'm here with the 2021 Hemiway Escape. This is a moped style e-bike, 750 watts, 48 volt battery, 20 by four inch fat tires on this bike. Uh, right now at the timing of the video, it goes for $15.99. That may fluctuate $100 here and there as, as time goes on, we'll see. But that's what it sells for right now and I promised you that I would come back with a full, complete, comprehensive review on this bike and today's the day for that. We're gonna go through it as we always do, front to back, top to bottom, show you all the components and pieces, talk a little bit about it so you can see what you get for your money in the Hemiway Escape. And of course, again, right off the bat, I wanna let you know I did not purchase this bike. This bike is here courtesy of Hemiway. So thank you, Hemiway, for sending me this bike to review. And number two is that I am not a cyclist or an e-bike expert. I'm really just your average Joe that rides e-bikes. So that's the perspective I'm trying to deliver information to you from. Um, I'm not sure that people really care so much how many millimeters of travel are in the front forks. You just kind of want to get an overall feel for the bike, what it's like to ride it, and uh, maybe get a close-up look so you can see if it's a bike you want to consider. So that's what we're going to do today, uh, show you this bike. And uh, the way I'm going to set up this video, because I have a lot of information to, del to deliver to you, is we're going to go through the bike, front to back, and then I'm going to actually show you some footage of myself and my wife riding it so you can get the two different perspectives, because I'm six foot one, she is five foot three, so it's two drastically different sizes on this bike. You can see how comfortable it is for each of those size uh, people. And then uh, after that, we'll do some performance uh, footage where you can see how fast can you pedal this thing? How does it climb hills? What's the top speed? All that kind of stuff. And then lastly, I'm gonna answer some questions from the previous video. I asked you to put questions in the comment section and I'm gonna go through some of those. So uh, hopefully, answer as much as I can for you about this bike. And again, if you have questions that I don't cover, just put them in the comments and I will try my best to answer them if I can. So let's get started. Let's take a look at this thing close up. There is the 2021 Hemiway Escape. It's a sharp looking bike, moped style. My first one of those very interesting and fun style of bike to ride. I do like it a lot actually. And I want to give you the close up look. So let's take a close look here on um, the front we've got are 20 by four inch fat tires. You can see they do have a little bit of an aggressive tread on them. They're not really a street tire. They do have some knobs on there so you could take it off road. They're branded Kenda. It doesn't say what, I guess, model of Kenda it is, but it is a Kenda tire. Um, they're labeled as puncture proof on the website. It doesn't say that there's any kind of liner inside them. I don't know for sure if there is or not. You can see that they do have the silver stripe on there. I typically don't like the silver stripe on tires, the reflective stripe, but on this bike, I think it works. It just kind of, I don't know, matches the theme a little bit with the black and the white. So I do like it on this one. Also too, big difference right off the bat, you don't have spoked wheels, you have mag wheels, which are, add to the cool factor, I guess. It looks really neat going down the road with the, uh, the big, huge mag spokes spinning instead of your typical bicycle spokes. So, you get the mag wheels on this one and uh, it does come with a front fender just so you know i, I don't have it on because i store this on my hanging rack and you can't use the fender with it but it does come with full fenders standard on this bike uh, another thing i want to point out most of the e-bikes are going to have a quick release front skewer this is a, a front axle a very substantial bolt that goes through there and uh you know you're not going to quick release this and honestly i all my other bikes have quick releases and I can't tell you one time that I've ever used it. So just know that this is not a quick release. It is a, a full bolt axle there that goes through. You've got 180 millimeter rotors on your fully hydraulic brakes. So maybe another upgrade from other bikes in this price point. They are not branded at all. I don't see any names on them anywhere. So I don't know exactly what brand of hydraulic brakes they are they don't say it on the caliper or even on the brake lever so not sure on that you see we have a very large headlight here at the front i'll try to get a shot of it at night so you get a feel for how bright it is but it is a probably one of the biggest headlights i've seen on an e-bike we do have a front suspension fork so you get to soak up a little bit of bumps in the front end it does have preload and lockout knobs here on the top you can see this bike actually has the optional front basket attached to it. So this is not standard equipment. This is an option that you're going to have to purchase aftermarket from Hemiway. I think they go for around $79 and it just bolts four bolts right there onto the, this bracket on the front of the bike. Very simple to install it. All right. Well, you can see we've got our wires kind of 
hanging loosely here. I wish there was something that wrapped these up a little bit nicer, but that is the only point on the bike where they're exposed. They, after the, this spot here, they go into the frame here and down. And then uh, your battery is right here. It seats down inside the frame. Very sleek looking, almost hidden. You don't really even know it's there. This is your charging port. If you don't want to take the battery out, you know, you just plug directly right into there. And it is a 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery. And they said it should get up to 45 miles on a single charge. So gives you an estimate of the range. Of course, that's gonna be heavily dependent upon how much you use the throttle and how much you use pedal assist. While we're here, you can see this bike is a very low step through. I did take a measurement on level ground and to this top tube right here, this piece, uh, it is 16 inches. So you figure you're gonna probably have to bring your foot up about 17 inches to step through this bike. That is very, very low. Very pleased with that. It's very approachable, easy bike to get onto because of that. Now it is a low step through. However, from ground to the top of the seat is 33 inches. So uh, my wife who is five foot three found that a little bit challenging. She wished she could have lowered the seat just a touch. Uh, she was kind of up on her tippy toes. So somewhat tall seat height still, I guess, even though you do have the low step through. Now regarding the seat, this is completely stationary. You do not move this seat up or down or forward or backward. This is uh, where you're sitting. There's no adjustment whatsoever in the seat, but it does give you more seating area to slide around on than a typical bike seat. And there was a lot of questions around the seat. So that's something I'm gonna circle back to toward the end of the video. So just hold on that for a second. You see, you do get a rear rack. This is standard equipment on the bike. So it does come with the rear rack, but not the front rack. And it does have an integrated tail light that does function and, and uh, flashes when you pull the brakes. So you get a working tail light on this. Again, fenders are included. So you get these flat black tire hugging fenders. At the back here, you'll see we get a Shimano Altus. That's your shifter at seven speeds. Get a 48 volt, 750 watt rear hub motor. There is a derailleur guard on here, which you can see it has been used. <laughs> um, I got this secondhand from the marketing team, so they, uh, they scuffed it up a little bit. And another big upgrade for this bike is the rear suspension. So you get these dual shocks on the back. Uh, one of the only bikes that has a you know, functioning rear suspension at this price point. So nice upgrade there. There were some questions too on how squishy that is. It is not very squishy. I do have some footage of me uh, kind of bouncing up and down this bike. So let's take a look at that so you can see how much squish there is. I just want to show the rear suspension in action. Very stiff. I weigh 170. So you can see not a ton of movement, but I'll say that you do notice it. Uh, I could feel it when I was riding. If you go through like a, a bumpy field, it does soak up some of the bumps. It was, it was noticeable, even though it's not like riding in an air ride suspension in a car, like super soft, squishy. Um, I don't, you know, don't think you're gonna be jumping off of curbs and have a nice squishy soft landing with this. It's a pretty stiff suspension, but it does function. It does give you a little bit of squish going over bumps. I would rather have it than not have it, that's for sure. All right, if we slide down here, you see you get Welgo pedals and they do have the little nubs on the top there. So it gives you some decent footing. Uh, not very slippery. I do like those. You have a single sided chain ring here on the front. So uh, I guess there is a risk that you could pop the chain off to the inside. I like it when these are double, but uh, haven't had any issues riding it. But let's come up to the handlebars so you can see what's going on up here. You can see you get your uh, wider palm rests on these. These are the you know fake leather wrap grips. These ones, normally they kind of spin. These ones are actually locked there pretty good in place. So I like that. Uh, you have a half twist throttle right here. Your Shimano SIS shifting mechanism here. And also, you know, your full hydraulic brakes. This is, this is one of the standout things on this bike, honestly. Even though there's no branding on these, it just says mineral oil on the top. I don't know what brakes these are, but man, they work great. This thing stops on a dime. Uh, probably one of the best braking bikes I've been on, honestly. So I don't know what brand they are, but they work. That's, that's for, for certain. They are very powerful brakes. And they do have motor cutoffs as well. So when you pull the brake, it disengages the motor. I like this long bar here, long straight bar for the handlebars. 
it allows you to mount stuff. I'm gonna mount, you know, phone holder here, maybe a cup holder. Uh, you could put an extra headlight. I, I like that where a lot of them, the handlebars will do that swooping curve and it's hard to really mount anything on there extra. This one, you've got plenty of space to mount whatever you want. You could even slide the screen, you know, side to side if you want on one side or the other. And this is the same exact screen that comes on the Himuwe Cruiser bike. Uh, I can't remember the name of it exactly, um, but it is, uh, you know, the same display, same programming, everything. I actually did a whole video on how to program, you know, top speed and how to set your pedal assist settings and, and all that. So, um, you know, check out the video on that if you want to know the complete programming guide on this. But that's an important thing to point out on this bike is this does have that same screen so you can program your pedal assist settings you can set so it's zero through five zero through seven zero through nine you can also set the amount of power delivered in each setting so highly customizable i like that a lot about these hemiway bikes so here you got your control panel uh, plus and minus for your pedal assist uh, information the power button a headlight button which i like i love it when there's a separate headlight button you don't have to remember the combination of buttons to hit to get your headlight on so one touch headlight i do like that and i will turn it on here so you can get an idea of what the display looks like all the information you need battery indicator miles per hour odometer pedal assist level the only thing it does not have is the watt output i know it says that on the website i think where it shows the screen um, but it does not give you the wattage it's outputting it gives you this little power meter that goes up and down so i wish it showed the watts i've yet to be able to find a way to get that programmed in there so but easy to read, big display. I do like the display on these bikes. The handlebars are pretty adjustable. You just loosen the bolts here in the front and you can you know, tilt these bars backward if you need a shorter reach or forward if you want a longer reach. That's a very easy adjustment on there. I'm still kind of learning all the little quirks on this bike, but there's one thing I do want to point out that unfortunately is a dislike for me. And that is right here with the, the pedals in the kickstand, the way the kickstand is positioned, you get pedal lock when you go back it's, it runs right into it. So for me, someone that's always storing these bikes in a shed or a trailer or a small confined space where I need to back it up, I'm just constantly running the pedal into this kickstand. So I wish there was a different way that could be mounted. Uh, it might have to do with the balance on this bike for why they put it in that position. But it's unfortunate that you, you know, you, the pedal runs into it. But I guess kind of a minor gripe. Uh, your battery i'm going to take this battery out for you so you can see again how this comes out you just uh put the key in unlock right there and then you turn this knob here to un release the battery and it comes right out like that and that's the oh it's all hollow inside there because you're it's holding this whole huge battery and i found that your controller is actually underneath the seat i took the seat off that's where your controller is all right, well, that was a real quick overview of the Escape bike and what you get. And I'd like now to show you some footage of myself and my wife riding it so you kind of get a little bit of a feel for what it's like to, to ride and to pedal this thing. So let's take a look at that. Okay. How is it? For yeah? Someone 5'3", how is it? It's, I mean, it's nice. <laughs> I wish I could lower the seat, but can't. No, can't do that. But You're stuck there. So is it too okay. is it too high for you or not? Not too high. I mean, I just need it lowered just a little bit. Um, Think you can ride it? Yeah. Would you say it's easier or harder to get on than your red mini? It's about the same. I feel. Um, yeah. The seat's really comfortable. You like that seat? I thought it was hard as a rock. I feel like it's lighter. All right, so we got to vote that you like the seat. Okay. I do. I'm a marshmallow seat guy. I like them soft. Are you? I like that it's wider and longer. I I don't know. I have to ride it to see. Go it's ride it. Do you know how to turn it off? Yeah. Just hold it like the rack. Hold it like a second, yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah? Yeah? I like this way better than mine, I think. So fast. <laughs> this is like way easier to pedal. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm trying to keep the camera steady when I run. She says it's way easier to pedal. All right, so what did you think? I think I like it better than the mini. 
Um, better than the Rad I Mini. I think I do. Why? It's a lot easier to pedal. It's not heavy. I don't know. This is so funny because I said the seat was hard. You said it's soft. I feel like it's softer. I feel it's really hard to it's pedal. It's like really comfortable. <laughs> so this bike, <laughs> this fits you. Because the five, Rad three. Mini, the seat like hurts my tailbone. I don't know why. <laughs> well, that's just a regular bike seat. This is like a bench seat. I of. like the bench, I think. It's comfy. You can see the back end spring just a tiny bit when yeah. you... But they yeah, are stiff I think springs. I like it better. Would you ride, you'd rather ride this than your rat? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and you don't work for him anyway. No. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> no, it is cooler. I would rather ride this than your rat too, honestly, just because it's cooler. Yeah. I told you you were going to like this one. I do like this better. Right? This is mine now. It's more like a scooter than it is a bicycle. Yeah. This is not yours. Thumbs up. <laughs> this is not yours. This mine. Is mine. <laughs> it's mine. My bike. Bye. <laughs> Yeah, I just wish the seat would go lower. Um, yeah, because you're, okay, I'm so. I'm like on my tip, tip toe. Five foot three and you are on your tiptoes. Yeah. I just wish it would go lower, I think. But it's still rideable. I like it. Are you ready? It's yep. a okay. I don't even use the step through. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. Six. Go. Feet. One. Out. You look so big. Well, yeah, I am big for this, but <laughs> I can't stretch my leg out like that. Yeah. The seat's too short for me. It's like this is built for you. Yeah. Mine. <laughs> All right, so we definitely had two different perspectives riding this escape bike. For me, it's it feels like kind of a small bike. Uh, it's still fun. I'm still able to ride it comfortably. I can't really. I'm kind of scrunched up when I try to pedal it, but. You know, really, I just found myself riding it more like a moped twisting the throttle than pedaling a whole lot. It's really not a bike set up for a whole lot of input into the pedals, I feel, anyway. So um, I felt a little bit large on it. She actually wished the seat went down a little bit. She's five foot three, um, but was still able to get on it easily. She loved it. She, I, I, this one was one thing that actually shocked me. She said she liked this better than her Rad Mini which she loves that cute little white bike with the basket on it. So I was a little bit surprised to hear that. I knew she was going to be able to ride it and I knew she was going to like it. I just didn't think she would like it over that bike. And, you know, when I pressed her on it a little bit more, I said, you know, why? why? Why do you like this one more than that? And it had a lot to do with the seat. She liked the seat on this bike, uh, that it was, it was larger and there was more room for her to slide around on it, I guess. Uh, she complains that the bike seats hurt her tailbone. So like that. And she said it felt light, which is, this is the heaviest bike I own. So on the weight, she, it feels like it hides its weight well, I guess. So being that it's, you know, the center of gravity on this being, thing is very low. It doesn't feel heavy when you ride it at all. It feels very light and nimble. Where you get the weight is when you try to pick it up. Then it feels heavy. So I was surprised that she liked it more. I even asked her the next day, I'm like, you know, when your family comes to visit, we're all going to go ride e-bikes like which who's going to ride what bike and she said i don't care as long as i get this one so th i might have lost this bike this might be hers now but anyway i hope that was helpful to see the different perspectives from short versus tall riding this let's take a look at some of the performance tests now all right here we are at pedaling top speed i'm going to guess that we barely break 25 that's my guess so top gear pedal assist five let's see what she's got I mean, it gets up to speed fast. I mean, I can't pedal. I'm just gonna rotate the pedals here. Okay, so the top speed pedaling was interesting. I, I was pedaling furiously. You just can't keep up, so. I just uh, actually stopped trying to keep up with the bike and just slowly rotated the pedal so the cadence sensor would still catch and 
you know, it kept me pretty steady around you know, 27, 28 miles an hour. I'm surprised. It did way better than I thought it was going to do. So let's, uh, let's hit a quick 0 to 20 and see what that's like. So throttle only on the 0 to 20. 3, 2, 1, and go. Not bad. Okay, throttle only top speed, here we go. Here we are at hill climb. We're gonna do pedaling hill climb. I'm in pedal assist four, and I'm in six gear mechanically because I mean you, you pedal out of these gears so fast. But I will say this: I'm already down a battery bar indicator. I don't know if that I haven't been riding that long, so I don't know if that is, you know, showing that this is a smaller capacity, or it could be that it's 40 degrees out right now. Maybe that's killing it faster. I don't know. But after not much riding, I'm already down a bar. So pointing that out, but let's do pedaling hill climb and see where this comes in at. I'm not even sure where to guess it. I'm going to say it's going to climb it at maybe 14, 15 miles an hour. Let's give it a go. Kicks in strong, typical Hemiway fashion. Yeah, just flying. Again, when I pedal up here, I don't put much effort into the pedals. I just pedal so there's a little pressure back. All right, it cruised up that hill. No problem at all. Super, super easy. This bike's really strong. All right, time to do throttle only up the hill. Any guesses? I'm gonna say 10 to 11 miles an hour. Here we go. Started off strong, but she's slowing a little bit. 12. And we'll call it like 11, 12-ish. These bikes are never as strong with the throttle. They're always stronger with pedal assist. I guess it's set up that way in the programming. Because, um, you know, being the class two bikes, the throttle is not supposed to carry you more than whatever 20 miles an hour so i think that's why the pedal assist always always ends up being stronger certainly one standout feature on this bike is the brakes they are just phenomenal this could be the best brakes i've got on any bike really these full hydraulics i mean you can stop in an instant all right well as you saw decent performance on this bike it's pretty much on par with bikes in this price point and with these similar components you know the 750 motors in them and the 48 volt batteries that's about what you get they're all in that same performance range i wouldn't say this bike stood out in any one particular area just good performer all the way around the only drawback was the pedaling i wasn't able to put much into the pedal so you couldn't pedal it quite as fast and really i mean this it's not set up for that it's set up to just kind of be a moped cruiser around town i feel so don't really care about that myself all right, now I want to answer some questions that you guys had. Number one was, can a short person ride it? Well, you saw my five foot three wife ride this bike and she loved it, she could get on it. Wanted this seat a little bit lower, but still was able to get on it comfortably. Uh, she did tippy toe it, but able to ride it, really liked it. Liked it better than her other bike, actually. You want to know price comparisons to competitors. I'm not gonna go through all the different prices of competitors. You can look that up online. What I can tell you is some of the main ones, like the Juice Scorpion, that one was pretty much the closest I could see to this bike. They look similar. The Scorpion was hundred bucks more. It had a 52 volt battery instead of 48, but all the other components were, you know, pretty much identical. Uh, that bike also had street tires, like, you know, slick street tires. This has got more off-road style tires. That one weighed a little bit more, had a smaller battery, uh, but they're, those are pretty, pretty close competitors. The Rad Runner, depending on which version you get, you know, the, the base model is only like 1199, but 
that thing's missing all kinds of stuff. It only has one gear, it doesn't have a display screen, there's no suspension, front or back, it has mechanical brakes, so this one just blows that out of the water. If you go for the Runner Plus, that's a little bit closer comparison, but still no suspension and no hydraulic brakes, and it was more money, so those are probably your top two. You can look up all the other ones. There's a bunch out there, moped style like this. And really what it comes down to, and I say this all the time, is all the bikes in this price point are gonna have a different mix and match of components. You know, they'll be uh, ahead of the game here and behind in other areas. It's up to you to decide which mix and match you like the best for the money. Most of the other questions you had were about the seat. There was a lot of questions about the seat. How soft is it? Can you do a long ride with it? Can you put a spacer in here? So what I did is I took this seat off. So you can actually see what the bracket looks like underneath and what the seat looks like underneath. So uh, let me jump over to that footage really quick. All right, well, this is what the bike looks like with the seat off completely. You can see the platform that it's mounted to. It's just four bolts that hold this thing on, you know, two in the front here, two in the back. Your controller is hiding in there. Controller's stuffed down inside this you know, frame tube that comes down from the seat. So if you ever need to get to that, that's where it is. And then, you know, it was just held on with these four bolts right here, really easy to get off with one Allen wrench. And here's your seat. So uh, a lot of you were asking, could you do some kind of spacer here underneath the seat to make it higher? Yeah, I'm, if you're handy, I'm sure you could, you know, make something that fits underneath the seat to break, you know, raise it up a little bit. Um, you could, if you don't like the seat, you could maybe have this reupholstered with different foam or something, I guess. But yeah, they don't sell any kind of spacer bracket, but I'm sure you could probably make something if you really wanted to. But there is the uh, underside of your seat. And again, this is what this looks like. All right, well, I hope that was helpful to see what that looked like underneath there. If you're handy enough, you probably could build some kind of spacer if you really wanted to raise it up. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I've been able to ride this bike very comfortably, and I don't really care so much on this style of bike for putting a lot of effort into the pedals. So it is what it is. Um, the seat softness for long rides, I mean, I'm a person that likes a squishy, soft marshmallow seat, and I didn't really notice this being uncomfortable you know, after 10 or 15 miles of riding, it's didn't didn't notice it. Uh, my wife thought it was very comfortable. So things like that, seat comfort, that's totally subjective. And that's going to be dependent upon you. It, it's not a bad seat. All right, well, the only other questions were about the springiness of the rear suspension. We already covered that. So I think that about does it. I hope you found the information useful if you're considering this bike. Um, or at least enjoyable to watch. I'll put a link to the bike in the description. Uh, it's just a link. I'm not sponsored by or commissioned by Hemiway or anything like that. So you can always just Google them and find the bike as well. If you want to get more you know, of the technical information and all the details on the bike. If you have any additional questions, like I said, just put them in the comments. I will try my best to answer them. And I think that's all. Thank you so much for watching.